Hi, Mike's Carburetor Parts here. Um, I'm going to show you how the choke works on a Carter four barrel carburetor. In this instance, it's a WCFB four barrel. But basically, uh, chokes work pretty much the same. The linkage will be a little bit different, etc. But the principle um, will be the same. So, first of all, we have the choke housing. You see the choke valve opening and closing using this lever right here. Right, that's what we're going to use to close the choke. And then we have a thermostat. It's got a coil in here. And coils generally uh, coil up like this when you put them in there and uh, close the choke. And then as it heats up, it, it expands and let, allows the choke to open. Okay, The thermostat generally does not open the choke. The choke opens itself. It's just a spring. It closes the choke by spring tension. So we'll put, put it on here. And uh, let me let me get the screws on here so it'll hold it. So remember to put that uh, spring lip on the right side of the uh, choke lever that I showed you, so it'll uh, close it. So, to start with, we'll adjust this choke, since the engine is cold, we'll adjust it so the choke is closed. We need to open the throttle a little bit, so uh, otherwise it may hang up here and not allow the choke to close. Uh, so we're going to twist this choke thermostat, in this particular case counterclockwise, so I'm going to go the other way, and we're going to twist it until the choke closes, and then give it another one eighth inch of a turn. Now this is this is actually closed on this one. It's got it's got some problems with the linkage, but for demonstration purposes. So there's closed. We're gonna tighten this up. Now, as I showed you, the spring is compressed. This is a hot air type choke. So the hot air comes into here from the manifold. Okay, and it's pulled in by vacuum that comes into the uh, uh, choke through a hole through the housing in, in this case it's right there and heats up the choke and that allows the thermostat to loosen up and as the thermostat loosens up the thermostat will turn and allows the choke to open okay so the choke will open itself through weight and through a uh, vacuum from the engine. Now, a lot of chokes will have index marks on it. Ignore those. Uh, those index marks are made when everything is new, but as carburetors get 60, 70 years old, uh, they're worn. And the indexes really doesn't help much. Also, a lot of choke thermostats are retrofit. See, this one doesn't have a mark on it. So this, this particular thermostat will fit a different carburetor. In this case, I know it's off of a YFA. So don't depend on those index marks. Turn the choke until it closes. And then I give another 1A just to give it a little, little bit of a tension. Tension, excuse me. Now, that's to close it. That's the adjustment to close it. So here's the linkage on this particular carburetor. And... With the throttle closed, right here is a fast idle cam. Now in this carburetor, the fast idle cam has a spring on it. And I have a separate video that shows you how to install this spring. It's a little complicated. And I believe we do have those springs available. Anyhow, uh, with the choke closed, it puts a fast idle on the high step of the cam. See, low step right there, throttle closes. Okay on the high step 
which opens the throttle valves slightly, okay? And the uh, RPM will increase. So the RPM probably around 1200 or so where it's uh, 600 at idle uh, with a hot engine. So, th so when you close the valve, it puts the, uh, excuse me, idle cam, high idle cam, fast idle cam, excuse me, on the, on the, on the higher step, thus increasing the speed. Okay, as it warms up and the choke opens, you can see it right there. Now the fast idle is on the lowest part of the cam and the throttle valve for the primary will be closed. Okay, so there's a few other adjustments on the uh, uh, choke part of it which I won't go through on this particular carburetor but uh, hopefully that gives you an idea of how it works. So again, the thermostat, we can put coil the thermostat coil inside by turning this counterclockwise, closing the choke with the engine cold, that moves it on the high idle cam here, just like so. When that gets hot, it, it goes to the low part of the cam and allows the idle to go down, closes the throttle. The whole idle thing is about the throttle opening and closing. Hot air comes from the manifold into this right here, which is sucked by a little bit of vacuum that comes from the carburetor right here through the housing and gets in here and warms up that thermostat to where it uh, loses its tension and the, just through the sheer weight of the linkage and the carburetor vacuum in particular will open the valve so it's open. Now, um, <clears throat> if you're having trouble with cold starting take a look at the carburetor, take their cleaner off is the valve closed? Now, if it's open, first thing you want to do, in case the uh, fast idle is holding it open, is, in any time you start a classic car with a carburetor, press the gas once. That allows the fast idle to do what it needs to do, and allows that choke to close. Okay? So, at cold, before you start it, press the gas once, look in here and see if that valve's closed. If it is, your choke is working. Now, as it warms up, check again, that valve should open. Okay, you don't necessarily need to hit the throttle, but you might have to a little bit. Remember that throttle, due to the linkage, could be holding it open or closed. So as it warms up, it should open all the way. And there you go. If it's not, it's going to run too rich. It's going to choke out the carburetor. So that's the way the choke works. I hope this helps you. I'll put a description in the parts, in our, excuse me, put part, uh, the link to our parts in the description so you can find parts for this particular, car, particular carburetor, WCFB, and also others. Thank you for watching. I hope this helps.